Hey everyone, I'm Warren from Datatail. In this video, we're going to look at my top five tips for efficiency. And when I say efficiency, what I mean is no code. Now I know DAX and AM is very important in Power BI, but for those of you who are using the tool for the first time, it can be a little bit daunting. So these are five tips to help you do some amazing things in Power BI, but without having to code. So if you like these type of videos, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And let's get into it. So this is the report. Um, you can download this. I'll put a link down below if you want a copy of this report and you want to try everything that I'm doing yourself. I'll drop that below. For my first tip, it is how do we add a new column without coding? And we can do this in Power Query. So we just head over to Transform Data. I'm in Power Query Editor. Now in this example, say I have these two columns. I'm just holding control to select the two of them. And what I want to do is I want to do a concatenation. So I want to take this value here, crimes against a person. I don't want the A. And I want to take assault and related offenses. I don't want the A20. And I want to concatenate these two fields without writing any code. This is probably my favorite button in Power Query, but it's this one here on the left, columns from examples. So select that. You can select all columns, or you can just select from the selection. So I've selected two columns. So I hit from selection. And what it does is it creates a new column here and it is going to look at the logic of what I write and try to work out what I'm doing for me. So if we take this example here, I'm just going to copy crimes against the person, drop that in there. Um, I might even add a pipe delimiter. And then this one, copy it from down here. So assault and related offenses. Space, drop that in hit return. So with one example, it doesn't know what I'm doing. So it needs another one. And it's always good to pick something that's a little bit different. So let's go to this row here. So again, it's crimes against a person. Drop that in there. Add my pipe, space, sexual offenses. Now you can see it's, it's writing the code up here and it's not exactly correct. But as it gets more information, hopefully it's going to correct itself. And there you have it. So it has written the code for us. Um, so text.combine, it wants the middle from the second, and then text middle from the third. So I can add more examples to build that out and I can check to see if it is doing the right thing because what this is assuming is from the second. So here I have A in a space and it's taking the second. Here I have A, B, zero. So if that is all correct, which it is for me, because I just have one letter here and I have three and a space here, that's all good. And it creates a new column for me. Um, the more complicated, sometimes it doesn't work, um, but one of my first go-to buttons, if I don't want to have to write M code, but I do want to create a column, column from examples is probably my number one tip for avoiding writing M code. Um, and also it's great for teaching you how to learn what M code is required, so which is fantastic. Second one, which is still in Power Query, is this conditional column. So I'm just, I'm still under add column and I select conditional column. So in here, for an example, what I want to do is I want to look at this PSA rate. So this is crimes, crime rate per 100,000 population. If it is greater than or equal to, now I could enter a number here. Um, I can also enter another column. So here I'll enter another column, LGA rate, that. So the PSA rate compared to LGA rate if it's greater than, um, I can give it a value of more. I can do the same again for the opposite way. So if it's less than or equal to, I 
hit enter value, I can select a column, enter this column, less. It's always good to have the else to, to catch your errors, uh, or blanks or, or whatever it is. So here I write error and I just give it a new column name. Uh, I'll just call it difference. There you go. So there we have less and more. All right. Just close and apply that. So the third tip that I want to show you is very similar to column from examples, but it is quick measure. So again, if you've created a measure in here, the option that we have is quick measures. Quick measures, a really good way to, again, not have to write DAX. And there's examples in here, um, aggregations, filters, time intelligence, totals, mathematical operations. So if I just give a very simple example, here I can say subtraction and it tells you what fields you need to do. So it's all drag and drop, which is great. Um, so again, if we use this example, so I can take the rate, here, you know, the sum of the rate, and, oh, that was from a different table. That's right. Let's cancel that one, go back out here. Some of this one, some of that one, by some of that one. Or I could say, you know, average. Now, you know, I've I haven't written any code. I click on OK. And it's going to create that measure for me. So it's up here. It always seems to put it in the, the first table. Uh, you can move that up in here, this option here for the home table. So I can move that to the appropriate table or I can leave it there. Um, but here you have a measure and here is the code. This one's quite simple. Obviously there's other examples, a lot more difficult, but here, here's the code. I didn't have to know how to write any DAX and it's created it for me. Fourth one we're gonna look at is binning. So in this example here, if I go over and look in the table view, in this table. So I've got a lot of local government areas uh, maybe I want to bin them or put them into a group. So what I can do is I can open this up and this is local government area. So if I go local government area and I just right click on here and the bottom option there is new group. So if I click on new group, now these are text. So the only option I have here is a list. And what I can do is, you know, it's quite a big list but I can select a few and group them, select a few more and group them. And obviously it would have some type of meaning for my groups. And one large group at the end, oh, another one more. So here I can make all the groups. I can give the groups a name, A, B, and or you can even have an other group. So if there's any that you've left out and click on OK, and what that's done is it's now created a new group here. You can see some I named, renamed and some I didn't. If I did this with a number, so again, I go to new group with a number. Now we have an option for bin. And so what this is, does is it, it will create a bin based on, you have some options here. So I can say the number of bins, I want five different bins over the min, min and the max value. So 2,000 to 25,000. Let's create five bins, so there'll be approximately 5,000 values. So I can create that as well. And then, so it gives me some bins here, and that makes it easier to have smaller groups for my visualization. So we'll go back to the report. The fifth one I want to show you is, I'll just expand this box here. So let's say in this report here, what I want to do is I want another column as a percentage. So I want 2013 as that whole column, I want to see the percentage. So here I have Alpine, it's 293. What is that as a percentage compared to all 2013? So you could write some DAX for that. Or what you can do is here, 
the field you can see is incidents recorded. What I'm going to do is take the other incidents recorded, well not the other, the same value, and I can bring it in twice. So now I have 293 and 293. And what you can do is when you open that up, there's an option here to say show the value as. So I can show the value as the percent of the whole to total, which is not what I want to do. I want to show it as a percent of the column total. And here it renames it. So I have incidents recorded 293, and then we have incidents recorded. So that's saying that's you know 0.1 percent of all incidents are in Alpine. So I didn't have to create a measure to do that. All I had to do was go into the values here on the drop down, show value as, and here I can perform a calculation. And it can go different ways. So the whole total, the column total, or the row total. Hope you found that interesting. Don't forget to subscribe and check out some of my other videos.